Welcome to uh, Mistakes View. Sharon Raji Maynard here. And in this growing world of podcasting, there is an increasing variety of subjects, and I love that. When I joined the podcasting community a little over a year ago, I decided to do what I do in my life when I want to begin something. Just jump in. Let it grow organically. A little like the Nike branding of just do it. In our world, we are presented with many problems. Albert Einstein gave great advice that still holds true in this matter when he said, problems cannot be solved by the level of knowledge or awareness that created them. We have to get outside of our box of the way we think. It was curiosity that took me on a radical search for answers. And those answers came from the spiritual world, from those teachers that I call the ancient ones. Their knowledge is the foundation for this podcast and the way I see life. Come here as you are to see the situation through my eyes, realizing that diversity is a natural outcome here on the planet and diversity inspires and expands our capabilities. There is great value in listening deeply to one another. I continue to use space in my art slash studio slash office as a podcasting booth. And I hope you enjoy these conversations we're having. If so, I would appreciate a rating, some stars at any of the podcast platforms you use because we're really in life, including this conversation together. And if you want to hold hands with me more deeply, go on over to the Patreon platform, patreon.com forward slash a mystics view, and I'll meet you there. And now, enjoy this episode. The memory of the message of my long ago dream of the home I had inherited from my grandmother has remained with me through the week. And then this morning, I'm sitting in a hospital waiting room. It's a room I've spent many hours in in the past eight months. And in a hospital where I have spent many more hours during the past five years. The hospital represents a current journey that I'm on, which I will unpackage in later episodes. Good, good gifts in the journey. But today, I mentioned the waiting room because that is where another grandmother invitation emerged. Let me tell you. And I ought not to be surprised, but I was. A new best friend of mine had scheduled an online gathering for grandmothers. She had set the time right on top of a regular follow-up hospital visit my daughter Michelle had. She has these regularly after her heart transplant. Both, of course, are important to me, and so thank you for cell phones and Bluetooth devices. I was able to join the call. This is a call I think is so important because it is time for women, all women, and especially grandmothers, to step up in more expansive ways. So here I am in a hospital waiting room. I'm curious what's going to emerge during this first grandmother call. And that was kind of my question. So right off the bat, we are invited into a meditation going to a sacred grove. We're surrounded by and rooted with trees. Well, of course we are. Grandmothers. And then the sharing of a dance that is held in great reverence and secrecy by our indigenous sisters. A dance once outlawed, as were so many of the gifts, songs, and dances that brought about the power of those in female bodies. For over five minutes, we are held across the planet together, being given this blessing that has been held for us by our indigenous sisters in North America. That movement alone was a confirmation for me 
A restoration of gifts, abilities has been held by our original indigenous circle of sisters. That alone is not what made me smile, however. It was the content of the dance itself. This dance was a process of reconnecting to our mothers, our grandmothers, back and back and back. Why? To hear their gifts and to release their crippling trauma, to restore their stories. What is in their pockets? And even before that, just like in my dream, to know that they had aprons that I am now wearing. And I move into their home. How do I get in? And the aprons appear. The pockets hold the key, which I simply draw forth and bingo. I am in the house. And as I sit in this waiting room, that experience of the dance fresh on my mind, awakening a twiggle in my body and in my heart, I remember another invitation that is a piece to this puzzle. I was in Seattle, Washington in 1994. I had looked for where it would be right for me to put down roots, to grow. And here was Seattle, with its water, its greenery, its trees, its misty morning. I was busy writing a book to share my journey with spiritual teachers, sharing the powerful abilities that they bring to our table of healing. There was a church congregation that encouraged new boxes of thinking. I'd visited it several times, and they were hosting an indigenous documentary filmmaker. It was an evening event, and I was intrigued. He was presenting the premise of his documentary, the stories of his journey, and where he was now in that goal. It sounded interesting. So he shared how he had wanted to visit various indigenous tribes around the planet to hear their prophecies and see the commonality. And in some cases, he spoke of those prophecies' fulfillment. I was especially taken by his story of a small group, three or four young men in Borneo. He hadn't known about them, but when he got to that area, he had been encouraged to meet them. The story he was told was of a village deep in the jungle, as were many tribes and villages. The rule in that area was retribution, justice. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. Evidently, there had been some aggrievous action done by one tribe against another. The tribe that had been attacked determined that it warranted extreme retribution, the annihilation of the attacking tribe. Plans were made, and on the day of justice, the warriors of the wronged tribe entered the village with a clear intention to end the lives of all, remove their bodies to nearby caves, and burn their homes to the ground. The sun rose, the warriors attacked, and the plan unfolded, with one exception. Some of the youngest, even babies, were kidnapped. They would take these young ones and assimilate them into various other tribes. Coming forward 18, 19, 20 years, and a few of those kidnapped children, now young men, happened to be in the same city. They found themselves in the same hangout. They talked. They began sharing. And they realized that they were all from the same village, one that no longer existed. They were from families long ago murdered. It may have been that they each had sensed an emptiness, a missing. Whatever the motivation, they decided to journey into the jungle, find the area of their village, the caves that held their ancestors' bodies, and even more important, once there, they committed to stay there, to sleep in the caves until they had dreamed awake the bones of their ancestors. The story that the filmmaker told of their dreams, their passion, their experiences, their innate abilities and skills that began to come forward from within themselves was really moving to me. I went up afterward to thank him for his presentation and especially the stories of the young man in Borneo. He looked down into my eyes and said, 
when are you going to dream awake your ancestors? And there I was, a white woman, totally assimilated in the American melding pot. I had no idea what he was talking about. I wasn't even aware of the limits of my birth box. And he stood, an indigenous man, and he must have seen in my eyes my question. And he smiled and very powerfully said, the women, dream awake the bones, the stories, the gifts, the magnificence of your ancestors, the women. Now, he didn't say that last part. I'm saying that now. He just simply said, the women. I come back to his words and I can add that last part. I've been here periodically, but he saw something for me that I did not, and I had not. And as so often happens, life spirals, and you're back in previous spaces, back to the same point. But each time you're just changed a little bit more. And now I sit back home, home from the hospital waiting room, and in my 2019 life, feet up on the hassock. I am back to the home I inherited from my grandmothers, that great, expansive home. And I'm thinking of the young man of Borneo and the invitation to dream away the bones of my mothers, of our mothers. What will that look like? I have no idea. But now I know that I don't need to know. I am ready to do it more fearlessly, creatively, collaboratively, and gracefully. You want to join me? Here's our quiet moment. Just sit and relax your mind. See an amazing grove of trees. And coming through the trees are sisters of all ages. They're walking toward the grove, gathering, called smiling, chattering as women do. In the warmth that streams from the sun are the spirits, the essences of our grandmothers, of our past grandmothers. They're ready to give us the sacred stories, the protected, guarded space of grace is able now to hold them. Sit gently with these questions for yourself. Grandmother, what would you ask me to let go of in behalf of your pain and trauma? And yes, I can. And what are you passing on to me as one of your guarded sacred gifts? And yes, I accept. So now that this grove is here for you always, bless these women, bless your experience. Put on your apron. There are more pockets than one. And look for where you can share your stories, those stories that will spark the stories in your grandmother's pockets and in the pockets of other women. Yes, we are ready and blessings. Thanks for coming along and sharing this episode. These various stories may stretch your mind, challenge your dogma, awaken you to new possibilities, or resonate with your own experiences. I'd love to hear any of that. You can always find me on Facebook at a Mystics View, of course, and the same on YouTube, a Mystics View. When you see the value of this podcast, please share with your friends. And I would love to have you give us a rating. Some stars would be wonderful. You can become a member of the Mystics View community on Patreon, where you can support us at any level. And we're really a growing community with all the gifts and ideas that I'm sharing back into that group. 
So there you can find us at www.patreon.com forward slash a mystic's view. The pressures of this world are rising. And what does that mean? And how can you effectively respond? My intentions is that my stories and sharings through this podcast will give you more insight, encouragement, and help you discover your own magnificent connection to that self beyond sight. It's a strong place to build from. Until next time.